Bengals fans, what's going on? Stone Shields on hand. Happy Monday to you guys. The Bengals, of course, were on by last week and really starting to get back into the swing of things this week. Massive matchup with the Pittsburgh Steelers coming up on Sunday. The Bengals, of course, really trying to do everything they can to keep their season alive and really going to be uh, needing a win pretty badly at home in the jungle, wearing the orange jerseys against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Really not another team you would want to go out there and face in this situation, right? It's kind of an all-or-nothing game for Cincinnati, and you're taking on those Pittsburgh Steelers in a classic AFC North duel. Should be pretty exciting. I'm just happy we're going to have some football back here this weekend after the bye. Coming up on today's show, we're going to spend some time talking about Orlando Brown Jr. Of course, Bengals left tackle that has missed the past three games with a knee-slash-fibula issue that he has been dealing with. Going to talk about him, kind of with the value he brings to this football team, speculate a little on whether or not we believe Orlando Brown Jr. will be available for this game on Sunday against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Also, obviously a ton of people on this football team need to step up if the Bengals hope to get to where they want to get to and at least give themselves a chance at the end of the season. But there's three veterans in particular that I'm going to spend some time talking about that really need to raise their games if they want to go out there and uh, put this team in a position where they can be successful. Lastly, Jermaine Pratt took to Twitter during the bye, uh, bye week, and I'm going to explain to you guys why I loved what Jermaine Pratt had to say there on social media. By the way, doing some solo producing here on today's video, so if you see me looking down or whatever the case may be, just trying to do multiple things at once as we progress through today's show. Before we hop in to today's show, I want to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already, trying to get to 14,000 subscribers here on Bengals Breakdown. We had an awesome watch party, uh, well, I guess two weeks ago, when the Bengals took on the Los Angeles Chargers, hoping for another awesome one as well this weekend when the Bengals take on the Steelers. One o'clock game, which I'm pretty excited about. Not going to have to stay up till the wee hours of the morning for that one. Uh, we will be live with a watch party, so hit that sub button, youtube.com slash Bengals TV. Let's try to hit that 14K mark by the time uh, the month of November closes here. That would be pretty cool. 550 subs. Can we do it by then? Definitely think we can do it on December 1st, which is when the game is played. But regardless, 14K is the goal. Hit that sub button if you haven't done so already. All right, Orlando Brown Jr. He did dress for practice today. So I certainly think that is a good sign. Zach Taylor addressed the media as he always does on Monday and said he's going to have more of an update as far as the injuries go on Wednesday at his press conference. But we've seen Orlando Brown Jr. be limited at practice throughout these past couple of weeks, and it hasn't led to him stepping up and playing in the football game. Got multiple injuries that he's dealing with, a knee and a fibula that have really caused him some issues. And it really is unfortunate because Orlando Brown Jr. really was having such a phenomenal season when it came to um, protecting Joe Burrow out there on the football field. These are some of his numbers. That run block grade, certainly not at the mark where he would like it. They're only at 50.4. But as far as protecting Joe Burrow, really was doing a phenomenal job of that. And I look at Orlando Brown Jr. as one of the main leaders on this offense. I also look at him as a weapon on this offense, despite the fact that he is an offensive lineman. And of course, not you know going to be making plays out in space or anything like that. But this offense really can get to a whole different level when Orlando Brown Jr. is out there. It's caused guys like Cody Ford to have to be inserted into the lineup and playing at that left tackle spot. Of course, Trent Brown went down earlier in the season. So you got the rookie Amarius Mims, who, by the way, has been really doing a nice job for you. But with the struggles there on the interior with Cordell Volson and Alex Kappa, both guys, by the way, probably going to be around next year as well. You really were leaning on that protection from the left side, and you haven't gotten it as good as you would like to um, in p the past weeks with Orlando Brown Jr. being absent. And, of course, when you're going up against Pittsburgh, it is always going to be a physical, physical football game. I could see Cody Ford really struggling in this game against the Steelers. If Orlando Brown Jr. is able to go on Sunday, that would be a massive advantage for the Bengals, buying Joe Burrow a little bit more time, giving him some more time to operate and distribute the football. Leads us to the pinned comment of today's video. Do you guys think Orlando Brown Jr. 
will play on Sunday. Type Y for yes or N for no for us in the comments section. If that ad comes here on YouTube, that's totally fine. Take advantage of it. Get down in the comments and let me know what you think. Before we move on and talk about those veteran players that um, really need to step up for Cincinnati, that group of three that I have put together, did want to bring this to your attention, this tweet here from Kelsey Conway. Sheldon Rankins and Sam Hubbard did not practice for Cincinnati here on Monday. Um, Rankins has a viral infection that caused him to miss the game against the Chargers. Kind of popped up on the injury report out of nowhere, was inactive for that game. And then, you know, he went through the entirety of the bye week and then still was not there today as well. So really don't have any more details beyond the fact that it is a viral infection, but certainly, um, you know, not ideal as far as the, you know, the things that uh, you were hoping he would be able to do this year for you. And um, hopefully he's going to be all right and be able to get back out there on the field for Cincinnati. And hopefully Zach Taylor will have some more details for us on Wednesday when he addresses the media. But no Sheldon Rankins again today on Monday for the Bengals. As for Sam Hubbard, a personal day for Sam Hubbard here, which seems, um, you know, kind of strange timing coming out of the bye, but maybe something, you know, popped up family-wise or whatever. Sam Hubbard was not there, but not injury-related. The Bengals expect him to be ready to go on Sunday. All right, let's hop into these three players here that really need to step up over the course of these next six games if Cincinnati is going to get to where they want to get to. Geno Stone. Your two main uh, free agent acquisitions this offseason were Geno Stone and Sheldon Rankins, both of which have not stepped up for you and done the things that you would like to see on the defensive side of the football. Geno Stone has continued to get beat over the top, let guys behind him, and it's really put um, this off or this defense in a bad spot. The quickness just hasn't been there from Geno Stone. Um, I don't know if he's you know lost a step somehow from you know last year in Baltimore. I don't think so. Obviously, he's a very young player. Maybe he's playing banged up. He did bang up that shin um, against Cleveland, so maybe that is lingering. But the speed hasn't been there, and the awareness hasn't been there. And just the ability to not let guys behind him. And it seems like he's always just a touch late getting to the spot in which he needs to get to. He addressed the media today in the Bengals locker room. He's a guy that says all the right things. I'm certainly pulling for him. He's got his head screwed on correctly. He understands that he needs to step up if this defense is going to get to where they want to get to. But it seems like Lou Anarumo is going to keep riding with Geno Stone back there as one of his safeties. We've seen Bon Bell get some less playing time going forward, more for uh, Jordan Battle. But it doesn't seem like they want to insert Tyson Anderson, who's been a special team star for you this year, into that safety spot defensively. Looks like they're continuing to roll with Geno Stone, and he's really got to um, increase his level of play for Cincinnati if they're going to be competitive on the defensive side of the football. And we'll keep it with the guy we were just talking about, Guy that has the viral infection, hopefully he's going to be okay. Sheldon Rankins absolutely has to be better for this football team. They made a decision in the offseason to go with Sheldon Rankins, and they lost a guy in DJ Reader that has really been a great piece for this defense over the past couple of years. Let's compare these two here, a little uh, stat comparison between these guys. DJ Reader has been a little bit more available um, but the numbers don't really jump out at you like, you know, DJ Reader's having some incredible year based on these numbers. But we all remember just how important DJ Reader was in the run game for Cincinnati, how great of a stopper he was in the run game for the Bengals. And, of course, teams in the past this season have had a lot of success running the football on Cincinnati. Obviously, Philadelphia. Delphia did, but really the Eagles have been able to run it on everybody. If you watched the game last night, running all over the Los Angeles Rams, does DJ Reader perhaps stop that? No, I don't think so. But I definitely think he is a better player than what you have in Sheldon Rankins. And by the way, you paid Sheldon Rankins more money than what DJ Reader got in Detroit. So that's a situation we constantly are talking about. The things the front office did, the things the front office didn't do. I think missing at that spot on the interior of your defensive line is something that you're really dealing with right now, and it's kind of a contributing factor as why you've struggled so much. Again, your two biggest free agent acquisitions are Sheldon Rankins and Geno Stone, and both through this course of the season are just absolute whiffs for the Cincinnati Bengals front office. We'll continue with our players who need to step up here in a moment, but first I want to give a shout-out to our friends over at Fanatics. Let you guys know that the Bengals' sideline hats 
are on sale now, and you can head on over to Fanatics and check them out. There's really a bunch of cool ones up there on their website. I know I've got a few of my own at the house that I like to rock. So get you some Bengals sideline swag. Get you some uh, Bengals sideline hats, courtesy of our friends over at Fanatics. And that link you see at the bottom of the screen, that will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Big shout out to our friends over at Fanatics. Make sure you have, uh, hop down there, click on that link, and get you some Bengals sideline swag. Last player here, Evan McPherson, of course, needs to step up for this Bengals football team. Your kicker that got paid those big bucks that Jamar Chase was talking about in the offseason. Look, Evan McPherson, you know, I was frustrated. Uh, well, look, I'm still frustrated with his performance out there on the football field, right? And then I certainly also was frustrated that he didn't go out there and, um, you know, address the media as, um, you know, most people do after games, especially when, you know, they are in a situation where they kind of lost the team, uh, the game, um, which Evan McPherson has done a few times this year for Cincinnati. Evan McPherson did address the media today, and per usual, I mean, he's just a – I don't know. He's just a, he's wired a little bit differently than most football players. He's just kind of a happy guy, right? Family guy. He was saying, yeah, just kind of unplugged, played golf all week. And it's just like, Evan, I mean, we get it. But, I mean, you're, you've been struggling out there on the football field, right? Look, I'm pulling for him. I think we're all pulling for Evan McPherson. He certainly needs to be better. That's just kind of the way he carries himself, right? He's kind of a lighthearted guy. You saw after the game. He was kind of laughing with, you know, the Chargers kicker after he missed two fourth quarter field goals. And you're just sitting there like, Evan, you kind of basically lost us the game and you're kind of having a good time after the game. This is just how this guy is. That's how he's wired. And that's probably a reason why he's been able to get to where he's been able to get to in this point of his career, get that big contract, be one of the best kickers in the National Football League, of course, leading up to this season. Had some struggles last year as well. But, look, he's going to have opportunities because the Bengals are going to be in close games down the stretch. I expect Sunday to be another close game for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's going to be at home, a place where he's made some kicks, of course, in the past. And um, he's going to have opportunities to kind of right these wrongs. I really am pulling for him. I hope he steps up. I hope he delivers. Zach Taylor once again backed him. Um, in his press conference today, said he has all the faith in the world in Evan McPherson. Jamar Chase as well. Apparently, has been a really awesome teammate for McPherson over the past week or so. So, we're all pulling for him, but the results absolutely have to get better. That, all, uh, that ball has got to find a way to get through those uprights if you are Evan McPherson. Something he has not done enough of so far here in 2024. Another opportunity for you guys to get interactive with our show here at Bengals Breakdown. What is your confidence level in Evan McPherson? Scale for us in the comments section, 1 to 10. After this bye week, has it changed at all as you've done some sitting down and reflecting as, you, as maybe you've heard Evan McPherson address the media like he did today? Let me know in the comments section. Get involved. Be honest with us. What is your confidence level in Evan McPherson? Before we get out of here, I do want to bring up this tweet, which was four days ago uh, during the bye week. This is what Jermaine Pratt put out there on Twitter, on social media. He said, we will win next week. Believe that. Work to win. And he did have his patented blood drop emoji that he always puts in there. GP Money, of course, has been with the Bengals since 2019. Was drafted by the Bengals in the third round that year and has been an awesome piece for this defense. And I talked about leading into the bye, how someone really needs to step up from a leadership perspective. And I thought Jermaine Pratt could certainly be one of those guys because he's a guy that's really playing at a decently high level um, for this Bengals defense here in 2024. Taking a look at some of these numbers here, absolutely approaching that 100 tackle mark. He seems to always be in on those plays. Two huge force fumbles that he has as well. An interception to go on with all the things he is doing defensively. And he always seems to know what the right move is on defense. He's not a guy that goes out there and makes a ton of mental mistakes. I would love to see him grab the bull by the horns and really play really well against this Pittsburgh Steelers team and really do a good job of leading this Bengals defense. Because they're at a point right now where they just don't have enough guys playing well. So there's really only a handful of guys that can step up and be leaders for this football team. And I certainly think Jermaine Pratt is one of those guys. Logan Wilson's certainly going to have to step up his level of play as well. 
kind of looks like a mistake at this point from the front office paying Logan Wilson that contract. I will look, I'll be very clear and honest with you guys. I would have done the same thing for Logan Wilson, but the level of play this year just doesn't, you know, match um, what the expectation was for Logan Wilson going into the season. I still have faith that he can figure it out, get some things together, do a better job of tackling, right? And uh, do a better job of showing off those ball skills that really made him such an incredible linebacker. You know, over the past couple of years, that was something that was so impressive about his game was his ability to really flash those ball skills and really just be an athletic linebacker. doesn't seem like he moves around quite the same way at this point. Maybe he gained some weight, and of course, probably he is banged up as well, as pretty much everybody is at this point in the season. But Jermaine Pratt, I love the tweet. He's confident. He's letting everybody know it. It's Steelers week. It's a massive week for this football team. Jermaine Pratt's going to show up and be ready to go on Sunday and ready to lead that defense for Lou Anarumo. Make sure you guys do give me a follow over on Twitter at StoneShields underscore. Trying to get to 600 followers as quickly as possible. I don't know if we're going to be able to hit that by the end of the month, but that certainly is going to be our goal in December is to get to that 600 follower mark over there on Twitter. X, whatever you want to call it, all of our Bengals breakdown content will be posted. My Twitter page, as well as all injury updates from the beat writers and uh, from time to time, my own thoughts and personal opinions as well. So give me a follow over on Twitter slash X at Stone Shields underscore.